Hey guys, Winston for Carbide3D here. One of the fun things you can do with Carbide Create Pro is make a topographic carving. Create Pro is able to ingest grayscale images and turn them into a 3D model. So if you can find a height map of a place that interests you, you can machine a physical representation of it. There are plenty of places online where you can access height map data. The US Geological Survey is one site that's packed with a bunch of high resolution datasets, but it can be a little bit overwhelming to navigate. Personally, I'm fine with more readily available resources returned by a quick Google search. I don't need insanely high resolution maps from 15 different satellite passes. I'll leave a link in the description to the site I'm using for this video. One of the places that's been in my imagination recently is Crater Lake. One of the photographers that I'm a fan of frequents the national park and has taken some really inspiring shots out there. So one day I hope to make it out to Crater Lake myself. In the meantime, while I'm quarantined at home, this is the closest I'll get to experiencing the geology of the Pacific Northwest. I'll export a height map of Crater Lake and then bring it into my photo editor of choice. You don't need anything fancy here. I'll just crop my image to the desired aspect ratio I want. In this case, it's going to be a square. Now, in Carbide Create Pro, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my project. I want my canvas to be about 4 by 4 inches square, and my stock is going to be 3 quarters of an inch tall. I'll go into the modeling workspace next and import the height map that I cropped. Depending on how high resolution your image is, this might take a moment. The height parameter defines the difference between the highest peak and lowest value of your terrain map. In this case, I want to say that that difference should be about 3 eighths of an inch. You can leave the scaling alone. In this case, it's auto-scaled the image to fit my canvas. If you apply these settings now and preview the model, you'll see that the lowest point leaves nearly no thickness underneath the model. If you were to carve this in real life, you would likely punch a hole through your stock. We need to build up some material underneath everything, so I'll use the base height option to add another 3 eighths of an inch underneath the topographic features. This just adds a fixed offset to everything. And now this model is looking like something we can machine. Before we can make toolpaths though, I'm going to need to go into the design workspace. In order to apply any toolpath in Carbide Create, you need a contour to work off of. I'll draw in a square that covers the full area of the canvas. This will be my containment boundary for roughing and finishing operations, but for my finished piece I want this to actually have some rounded edges. I think it'll look nicer and be easier to hold this way. So I'll draw in another square, but this time I'll select the option to fill at the corners. Now we can make some toolpaths. I'm going to select my original square and apply a 3D roughing toolpath to it. I'll use an eighth inch flat end mill for this application, picked from the hardwood library for the shape Oko. Next, I'll select the square again and apply a 3D finishing toolpath. This time, I'll choose a 1 16th inch ball end mill. The settings for 3D finishing are quite conservative because we don't know exactly how much material you've removed prior. Roughing with a quarter inch end mill will remove less material than with an eighth inch end mill because the smaller tool can fit into tighter nooks and crannies. You can use a faster feed rate if you have high confidence that the finishing end mill won't have to punch through very much material. The other factor that determines how long the finishing toolpath will take is step over. Smaller ball end mills can mill smaller features, but will also need to take smaller step overs in order to not leave visible gouges in the finished surface. In most cases, if your step over is about 15% of your end mill diameter or larger, you're going to end up with a fairly coarse looking surface. About 10 to 12% is a reasonable step over for most applications, and if you're extremely nitpicky, you might have to go down to 7 or even 5% step over. A fatter end mill will be able to take a proportionally larger step over and thus machine a surface faster, but the level of detail will be lower. This trade off is a calculation that you will need to make. Between my roughing and finishing operations, I'll add in a contour operation to my rounded off square. This toolpath will use an eighth inch end mill just like the roughing toolpath. Since I have a bit setter, I'll export these toolpaths in one file and then head to the garage. I've stuck down a piece of walnut with double sided tape and used some clamps to add just a little bit of extra lateral support. My XY0 is set to the lower left corner of the stock but with at least an eighth inch of margin to the left. This is just so I can avoid hitting my clamps with that contouring toolpath around my square later. In Carbide Create, I chose to set my zero height at the bottom of my stock. I do this to guarantee that the end mill stops right before it digs into the wasteboard. If you don't have a bit setter, you may also want to do this, especially if your stock isn't oversized like mine. Because as soon as you machine away at the top of your stock, you won't be able to reference that original surface of your material. With an eighth inch end mill loaded up, I'll start the G-code program. The roughing operation is quite easy in a dry, fine-grained wood like walnut. 
It's still a little fuzzy, but that will all be removed in the finishing pass. If you have a wood species with a very coarse fiber structure that's prone to chipping out, you should really consider a downcutting end mill. However, in my particular application, I don't want to use the Amana 46200-K, I want to use an 8th inch shank end mill to cut through 3 quarter inch wood. The Amana 8th inch downcut has a shoulder that prohibits it from plunging deeper than half an inch. I happen to have a long reach 8th inch end mill handy, so I can rough and cut through my stock with a single tool. But if you don't have an 8th inch tool that you feel comfortable cutting through 3 quarters of an inch of material with, you can use a quarter inch end mill instead. With my rounded square tile of walnut cut out, this number 112 16th inch ball end mill will methodically march across the walnut defining mountains and valleys and plains. This toolpath was projected to take about 45 minutes, but I found that I was able to go faster than the default speeds and feeds. I ran this operation at 170% speed. Once everything is done, you can use a stiff brush to remove most of the fuzzy fibers that may be stuck to the top surface and do a little sanding around the perimeter of your model. And that is how you can make a topographic carving. From one grayscale image and two sketched squares, you can produce a piece like this using Carbide Create. If you were to import SVG boundaries, you could get even fancier and cut out topographic maps of entire states or countries. Hope this video gives you some project ideas, good luck, and have fun machining, folks.